of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Hey guys, Julian here. It's Sabbath message. Shabbat Shalom. I'm going to give God glory. Father God, I give you all the glory for dreams, visions, words of knowledge. Thank you, Father, for your word. We're going to be digging into it a little bit today. Thank you for providing the scriptures, Holy Spirit. I come against every evil tongue that would come against the brethren. They're flickering tongues. We cut them out with a double-edged sword. and We slice off the head of the serpent and kick them back to the pit. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you take this video to those that need to see it. Precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Guys, we are on the brink of it all happening very, very soon. Oh, man. It's been so exciting. So exciting. All the messages that we're getting. Um, you know, it, it's it's so exciting. I just I'm just going to say it's so exciting. Nobody, no man knows the day or the hour, and I do not know that. Only, but but God is saying that you will know the season. And let me tell you what: we are in the season. We're days away. We're days away. So Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is the Sabbath message, and uh, I call it a chicken dinner. So what is all that? What is this ch chicken categories and all that? What, what's this all about? So I want to say thanks to a brother named Aaron who made a comment on one of my healthy snacks. Um, he told me that bread is the symbol of the faith in Jesus. We know that, right? But chicken means to transform or comply to his faith. And so I kept getting all these visions about chicken dinner, about chicken sandwich, about so chicken dinner means like a, a full blown message like this one, you know, Sabbath message with some, you know, good content, I guess. And again, all the content has been provided by the Holy Spirit. And um, and then a chicken sandwich is like a, a teaching or learning, um, a chicken leg or drumstick. The Lord is saying, say it over again, say it over, over, say it over, you know, give it a, give it a drum beat. Like, you know, and, and that's why I say to you guys, you know, have you read God's word today? Have you prayed today? Have you worshiped today? Have you taken Holy Communion? And are you fasting? That's that's the Lord saying, you know, beat it into the beat it into them right just drums drum it away um so the chicken wing i just recently had this one given to me i, I saw a chicken wing and it means the holy spirit is going to deliver it so you just you know he's basically saying put it out there and the holy spirit's going to deliver it so it kind of goes in conjunction with my chicken bites which is my new bible shorts that i've been doing um we do one of those a week and and we just it's a chicken bite of a chicken wing and we let the holy spirit just deliver it to those that need to hear it and then of course my chicken nuggets that is my healthy snack that i get out to you guys and the lord gave me that some time ago and that's where that's where all that comes from so don't be offended if if i you know if i'm talking about uh you know a spiritual meal which is god's word being being you know lining it up with a chicken dinner or chicken sandwich because the lord gave that to me i i didn't come up with that on my own <laughs> So check out our video tabs on this channel. I'm highlighting the training tab. You can find all kinds of training stuff in there. Just look at them closely um, and, and, you know, kind of look, look them over. We have all kinds of stuff in there. So this message is being posted on February 29th. That's notice February 29th. It's a leap year. Um, this is, you know, is very unique. So and so the Sabbath is actually on the first march 1st march 1st is that that's the sabbath it actually starts tonight and goes into sundown tomorrow night so that will be march 1st remember the sabbath remember the sabbath exodus chapter 20 verse 8 says remember the sabbath and keep it holy a lot of people a lot of churches have gotten away from that and they still think the sunday is the sabbath i'm telling you what things are getting ready to change god is getting ready to shake it shake it up he's going to shake it up brothers and sisters Remember, reading God's word is ministering angel to you. It cleanses you and washes you while you read it. So absorb as much as you can of it. If you can't fast, if you're having trouble fasting, read God's word. Read God's word. Make sure you're dumping your, your, your what? Burdens. Your burdens. Dump those burdens. And, you know, get rid of those, um, those generational curses and the soul ties with ungodly soul ties with people that are, you know, you, you'd be surprised, but they, whatever you have a soul type with someone, it's like you have a feeding tube from them to you and whatever they're feeding on, it's coming to you, brothers and sisters. So cut those soul ties. So who are we? Who are we? We are open eyes and heart. If you're new to us, you have some new subscribers. 
We are Open Eyes of Heart Ministry. We are a prophetic ministry. We we travel around in RVs wherever God tells us to go. We take messages to whoever he tells us to take messages to. Um, and so that's that's who we are. And then at the same time, so we're 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 pumping out videos on evangelism, teachings, prophetic updates, what's going on in the world. And we only speak what God wants us to speak. It's it's a lot of work, just so you know. <laughs> and we don't come up with it on our own. And and you know, we want to get you guys back on, on the, you know, in the right direction to the narrow path. And we are a five-fold ministry. We are a five-fold ministry. We do deliverance and um and and some of you have been following our guidance and have been delivered. Praise God. Hallelujah. We continue to be schooled by the Holy Spirit. We receive dreams, visions, rhema words, and uh, just daily, daily. Um, we just we, lately the Lord's been pummeling us. Um, so you know that's the thing that our our, our main message that we want to drumstick at home, right? Is pray daily, worship daily, commune with God in His Word, and take Holy Communion and fast weekly. That that's that's that the Lord said if you do those things. After confessing your sins and repenting, you do those things. That's Luke 9, 23. You're going to be on the narrow path. You're taking up your cross, brothers and sisters. You're becoming a disciple of Christ. Everybody that does that is a disciple of Christ. And guess what, brothers and sisters? That is good fruit. That is good fruit. And you're earning fruit into your fruit account in heaven. It's being written down on your account in the Lamb's book of life. We are an international ministry right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we love you guys in Canada and Japan and British Columbia. I'm sorry, not British Columbia. Um, Great Britain, Ireland, um, France, Germany. Goodness. Uh, I can't remember. Aust Austria, um, Romania. So, you know, just uh, South Africa. <laughs> I'm trying to remember them all. So we love you. So who are we? We are open eyes of heart. We are open eyes of heart. Hey, listen, we host a fast every week on Monday through Wednesday night, and it's you come off the fast on Thursday morning, it's water only, no meds, no food, no chewing gum, no coffee, nothing, nothing. It's Esther, it's Esther chapter four fast. And yes, by fasting three days, you are cleansing yourself. It's good fruit, that's good fruit. And you can find out contact information on the very end of this video. Um, it's a, I call it a contact car. You can see all the information about who we are, what we believe, and, and things like that. And I just want to say a special thank you to those that continue to support Open Eyes of Heart. We praise God for you. And what you have no idea, but you're getting ready to find out, I believe it's coming very, very soon, what you've been sowing into. It's it's powerful, brothers and sisters. It's powerful. And you're gonna you're gonna be like, wow, okay. All right, so um so we are messengers in the last days. So, you know, we we use the first Corinthians chapter two, verse 14. No, but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And that's one of our foundation, foundational blocks besides Jesus is the cornerstone. But this is what one of the other stones that we've added. And then we have another one, first John 2, 27. And these were all given to me by the Lord. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it's taught you you will abide in him so what is that really saying that's saying that the holy spirit will lead you but then but then you say well well why should i listen to you jules or julian why should i listen to what you say because we're going to get you back to the narrow path where you can start hearing and seeing from Father and the Holy Spirit, and then you start taking the guidance from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are a body. We're, we're a Christ body, right? Everybody has their peace. So the messages that are given to me by the Holy Spirit, I do not make them up, brothers and sisters. I get those through dr dreams, visions, or Rima words. And and then I share them with you. That's what I do. And there's a lot of my don't share. I've had, actually to this morning, Today is the 29th day of February of this, of this first of 2024. I've had two over 200 messages as of today. There's a little over 200 messages as of today. And if we keep this up, I'm probably going to have, um, if the if the Lord tarries, but I don't believe he is, 
um, we're gonna I'm gonna have about 1,200 messages by the end of the year. Um, last year, I think I ended with around 600 and something. The year before that, around 400 and something. And so it's been building up every year. So um, today's message is called Rapture Ready. Are you rapture ready? Why am I saying rapture ready? I've been talking about spiritual ascension so long. Well, I had a Holy Spirit epiphany this morning, and I'm going to share that with you um, later on in, in, in the video. So stay tuned. Stay with me. This, these are these are scriptures given to me by the Holy Spirit. Listen, just sit back, listen to the Holy Spirit speak to you, and listen to the messages that I was given. I've got nine messages of promise that I'm sharing with you. The other thing I want to share with you, I am going to be making a video, special video, because we have been given 12 messages about going to this church. Uh, it's a new, it's a new adventure for us. It's a new, um, it's a new journey, something new for beginning, something new for us. And we have been given 12 messages. And so I just reached out. Um, I sent them an overnight package uh, um, of letters. The Lord told me to communicate to them by letter. I sent them the prophetic words that the Lord was saying. And it's arriving today. So, um, but I will tell you, brothers and sisters, something, something big is getting ready to happen. That's what's getting ready to happen. Okay. So. My message number one, this is given to me on February 23rd. It says, my son, this is prophetic insight about sin. There is danger because of a long-standing issue with the church. This is talking about the body of Christ. Primarily, they are dead, unclean, and fleshly. In the very near future, many will have shame. They are uncovering their strength, and their spiritual walk will be affected. End of message. Now, I just want to highlight one little thing. Why, why is he saying many will have shame? What is going to happen? And I've told you guys before, I don't know if you've been paying attention. They're going to miss. They're going to miss spiritual ascension, spiritually ascending. They're going to miss it. And they're going to have shame. And this is the thing they've been, they've been hoping for all their life for years. Once they, once they accepted Christ, they were, they were, they had their eyes looking for that when are we going up, Lord? Take come, take, come and get us. In Daniel chapter twelve, verses one through three, it says, "At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble. Oh man, it's on its way, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, every one." who is found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like brightness of the firmament and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, what a powerful message from Daniel chapter 12. Wow, it's talking about our time right now. The time we're in right now, brothers and sisters. That's exactly what it's talking about. Again, I'll put all the scriptures in the description box. And I think I'm even going to put my transcripts for these dreams. Uh, I'm sorry, for these messages in there as well. Message number two. My son, this is prophetic insight. You have a covering and are loved while in the Holy Spirit ministry used in cleaning others. And you are entering the spiritual realm. There it is. This is about religious hypocrite hearts. They are scheming, concocting something. You are perceiving this in your heart from past sin. There needs to be cleansing of the heart. Your heart has fruit. That's the end of message. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified and white and refined. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Now, guys, before I go on to the third message, I want to say, the, Lord, the Holy Spirit is compelling me to say this. What is in your heart comes out of your mouth. What is in your heart comes out of your mouth. And so if, if you're going around making disgruntled comments on, on people's uh, YouTube channels or wherever, 
it's it's the same as you speaking it because it's coming out of your heart. You're speaking it, for, you're typing it up from your heart. You don't even have to say it, but it's coming from your heart, right? What is in your heart comes out of your mouth. And so I want to ask you today, is God's word in your heart? Is that what come, comes out of your mouth? Is your heart a mirror of God's word? Message number three. I get, was given this on 224, 224. My son, the young and youthful team and family is your finished work. And this is because you are moving in a righteous direction against the enemy for sheep without a shepherd. The followers will see your new glory, level of glory of God. And this is speaking of very focused individuals who is the team. The sheep without a shepherd and followers will be in communications with you in the message. Now, I want to explain this real quick. The, the young and youthful team and family, okay, the young and youthful team is the widespread chosen group, okay? And the family is is our seven. That's the seven of us. We're a family. And saying that the sheep without a shepherd's follows will be communications with you. I've been praying and asking the Lord, and this I prayed this the night before, and the Lord gave me this a message. Um, but I was, I was asking the Lord, after spiritual ascension, how will we communicate? How will we communicate with people? Um, I, I was I was kind of thinking that he would, you know, we won't be on, on our phones. But he's saying that we will be continued communicating on open eyes of heart and and through the, our, our, some of our phones. Now, I know that, you know, the phones are being watched and what have you being being surveyed and things like that. So but um, but the Lord has a covering. Keep that in mind. The Lord has a covering over us, and He's blocking all that. He's, he's blocking it out. They they have no way of understanding what's going on. In First John chapter two verse sixteen it says, "For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it is of the world." Remember that. Remember a couple of weeks ago I talked about how the flesh and the spirit are at enmity with each other. If you are in the flesh, you are away from the Father. You are away from the Father. You, the, the, the more you give up your flesh, the more you take up your cross, the closer you get in the Spirit to Father. Message from 225, 2024. My son, this is prophetic insight. You will have victory. You are steering your destiny with God, and it is beginning with you um, and are one that carries the anointed one. You will be leading but many are giving their destiny over to demonic spirits. You, you will have victory as one that carries the anointed one. And this is a new level of the glory of God. And this will happen at spiritual ascension. This is revelation. My son, in the very near future, many will have shame. They are uncovering their strength and their spiritual walk is affected. You will have victory as one that carries the anointed one. And the church will have victory. It will be a place of prosperity. My son, there will be spiritual opposition, opposition and influence. End of message. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 28 through 29, it says, Now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, you may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. So how do we, how do we uh, re reduce our chances of having shame? How do we abide in Jesus? Let me tell you. We confess our sins and we repent. Then we, every morning before daybreak, we read God's word. We absorb the word. That is communing with Jesus. Okay, you're being washed. Number two, you're going to do is you're going to pray to Father from your heart. Number three is worship Father from your heart. And this also can mean bowing down before him on, on your knees and paying homage to Father. Okay, I, I try to do that as I'm just sharing this as an example. I do that every day. And number four, holy communion daily. Holy communion daily, daily with Jesus. So we do it three times a day. We do it before we eat every day. Um, also, the last thing that number five is fast weekly, fast weekly. And a three-day fast is divine fullness for your heart, says the Holy Spirit. 
And then message number five uh, from 225. My son, this is prophetic insight. In a measure of time, you will be in glory. Love is increasing and growing in the process of normal growth for those not intimate and not in fellowship. End of message. So what the Lord is saying to me here is he's talking about my heart. He's saying your heart is growing. There's love growing in your heart for the subculture, the subculture of people. They've been sifted by Satan. They've been sifted all their lives. And they, they are lost. They are lost. They're in pig pens. And this is the sub subculture. And we are coming after the subculture for, for Father and for Jesus. We are. We are the chosen. We're going after them. We're going after them. <laughs> Jesus is going to have us go down that trail and not leave any behind. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, says, Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. And he who does, does the will of the Father, the will of God, sorry, abides forever. In 1 John, Chapter 2, verse 15 and 17 says, Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. Oh, man. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Guys, the, the, the world is passing away. Man is getting ready to have World War III. They, they are closing in on America. They are closing in on America. They're waiting for the right moment. They already have it planned. But Father God has his plan. He's waiting on... Father God has his plan. And by his word, he will execute it. By his word, he will execute it. Message number six, given to me on 226. My son, in America... You are a humble person and will be a hired shepherd for a ministry. In the race of faith, there will be those not intimate and not in fellowship with me. And they do not know the plans and purposes of God for the ministry and the church. And they will be fleshly sellouts. And this is speaking of the believer. So keeps on. You will be young and youthful and this will be your identity. My son, this is prophetic insight. It is beginning. You are steering your destiny with God and Christ. There is a momentary opportunity that will, but there will be evil spirits during spiritual warfare and battle. What is he saying? Momentary opportunity for people to find Christ because of their hearts are going to be shattered. What's coming, hearts are going to be shattered. Lots of hearts, men and women. In James chapter 1, verse 14 through 15, he says, But each one is tempted. When he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed, then when that desire has conceived, given birth, in a sense, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, it brings forth death. It brings forth death. And message number seven given to me on 227. This message received after two days of fasting. The whole team fasted, all seven of us. We, do, we just went through a fast. Seven, Lord woke me up in the morning at five in the morning, or actually it was earlier than that. But he said, I went the whole team fasting. So I, I got on the horn, told everybody, hey, we're fasting for three days. Bam. Here we are. This is the message. My son, this is prophetic insight. They, who is the team, are beautiful and good. And this is speaking about the family unit. My son, they will be working for those not intimate and not in fellowship with God. My son, their heart is beautiful and good with righteous, pure, and holy garments from cleansing. End of message. In James chapter 5, verse 5, it says, You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Message number 8, 227, 2024. My son, this is prophetic insight about the members of the team. 
who will be in the spiritual kingdom. And you are perceiving this in your heart, that you are in the enemy's camp and your anointing is giving covering and protection. In the future, your anointing will fight burdens because they are spiritual. In James chapter 5, verse 8, it says, You also be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? The coming of the Lord is at hand. And message number 9 on 228-2024, stay with me because I want to share um, something very important about are you rapture ready? My son, this is prophetic insight about hearts with agreement in the church because you are moving in a righteous direction for the unbelieving side. The heart is the place of God's rest for those with righteous, pure, and holy garments. Garments must be righteous. They must be pure and holy garments to be resting in faith, regardless of circumstances of people's hearts. End of message. So this is a little deep message. But let me see if I can break it down for you real quick. Hearts with agreements in the church. What he's, what he's saying is you, you love God, you love Jesus, but you've made an agreement in your heart for something else. You're looking at something else. This is called idols. Okay, so think about idols today in this time frame. Idols today are things that you're spending time on that is focused, that is just consuming you, consuming you. Work, work can be an idol. Work can be an idol. Your children can be an idol, brothers and sisters. Anything that you spend more time on than God is an idol. And that's what he's talking about. You have they have agreements. You've had you've had you have agreements. You have agreements. When I used to work, uh, when I used to work, even in I was in the army for 20 years. And and then after that, I worked for 16 at a company. But when, when I used to work, I never let the, I tried to never let the pressure get to me because I knew my heart was in with God, was with Jesus. And I knew that he was going to smooth everything out for me. Many times I had people come to me and say, how can you be so calm in this, in this, in this situation? I'm like, it's going to work its way out. That's what I would always say. It's going to work its way out. Everything's going to be okay. Even in combat, brothers and sisters. How could I be so calm? Because I knew that God was with me. I knew it. I knew it. I used to jump out of airplanes all the time. And every time I knew God was with me. I knew God. And, and, and if he chose not to cover me that time, I knew that I was going to be with him. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So um, in James chapter 5, verse 16, confess your trespasses to one another. Oh, that's a new one. Or And pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. What are you saying, Julian? James is saying, confess your trespasses to one another, to your brethren. Yes, go and confess to your pastor. Go confess to your brother or sister that you've, you've, you've sinned and that you've made it right. There's, that's, that's wonderful. That's good fruit. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 11, but he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Brothers and sisters, you have to have forgiveness. This is a basic. You have to get forgiveness. You have to, if you have unforgiveness for your, for anyone, a relative, mother, father, brother, sister, whoever, a wife, a husband, children, whatever, you've got to get that unforgiveness taken care of. You've got to bury it. You've got to bury the hatchet. you got to go take the shovel out and dig it, dig a hole and bury that unforgiveness. But you need to go to that person and at least make the attempt. If they don't want to talk to you and they don't want to hear your, your apology, so be it. But you've made the attempt. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, if someone says, I love God and he hates his brother, he is a liar. He's a liar about what? He's a liar about saying that he loves God. For, for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Now, finally, I am closing. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 39, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven. They don't. But my father only. 
But as the days of Noah were, were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of Son of Man be. Brothers and sisters, we're there. We're there. We're there. We're, we're at that time frame. Revelation chapter 6. Man, the Lord had me read that, I think, four times today. And yesterday as well. We're there, brothers and sisters. Read chapter 4, the sixth seal, the fifth and sixth seal. We're there, brothers and sisters. And then the Holy Spirit gave me an epiphany of the Holy uh, from the Holy Spirit and said, the rapture soon is in conjunction with spiritual ascension. So all this time I've been under the 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 understanding that spiritual ascension we would go up in spiritual ascension the chosen the anointed and, and the, the the young and youthful this is all the same group we'd go up we would come back and start getting everybody ready for the 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 rapture however that is still true that is still true i'm going to get to it so hang with me pastors and believers will have shame pastors and believers will have shame god has been Drum sticking this home to me. Almost every message, pastors and believers, many will have shame, he says. And he's showing me pastors that have shame. He's showing me this through visions and dreams. Listen, number three, Lord's messages that the rapture is sooner than I believe it to be. So the Lord has been telling me over and over, almost monthly, weekly, that my son, the rapture is sooner than what you believe it to be. And I, so I, I took that as, okay, well, that means that, um, you know, that we'll go up in spiritual ascension and then, and then the rapture will be sooner than what I thought it was going to be. Mm, listen to this one. Um, I've been speaking that there would be spiritual ascension. Then we would come back to earth and get people ready for rapture. That is still true. But, you ready for this? It's rapture number two. It's rapture number two. Brothers and sisters, rapture number one is getting ready to happen. The children are getting ready to go. Those that have clean garments, the Lord's speaking through this message. Those that have righteous and clean, white, clean garments, just like the, the five virgins that had their lamps full, that are ready. How do you get your lamps full? by praying every day, by worshiping every day, by reading God's word every day, by the Holy Communion every day, and by fasting, brothers and sisters. Many of you are going to have shame because you have, you said, oh, I can't do it. I, I, I know I'm lazy, whatever, whatever the reason. You're going to pay for it. You're going to be on that side of judgment. And it's very soon, like very soon. My last, check out my last message called In Seven Days. I have two of them, but the first one came out on the 8th of February. The last one, I think, was on the 26th. In seven days, brothers and sisters, the Lord is saying we're going to be young and youthful. What is young and youthful? We are going to be the chosen. We are going to be the chosen. Do you understand what that really means? The, the rapture, spiritual ascension, it's essentially the same thing. It's a spirit. It's essentially the same thing. And number five, and I'm real. I promise I'm closing. This is my last bullet point. I think I might have a scripture. In the past week, members of the team have received a message individually that we are ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, I had, based on the message I was getting, and that spiritual ascension was going to take us up for the wedding, the wedding of Jesus and his bride who is a physical woman. She's actually a physical woman who represents the bride as well. And then I thought we were coming back and we were going to, you know, get people ready for the rapture. And that would be the marriage supper of the lamb. But the Lord just gave every one of us an individual message to each individual, excuse me, saying that we are ready for the marriage supper of the lamb. So, that takes me to this. I, I pray that I pray that 
my deliverance to you about spiritual ascension that we would get you ready get people ready for um for the for the rapture did not mislead you i would hope that you would think well i want to be in spiritual ascension so they're essentially the same thing in first thessalonians chapter four come on come on you know this one for the lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of god and the dead in christ will rise hallelujah then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. I want to comfort you with these words. I want to comfort you. Are you rapture ready? Are you rapture ready? It's easy to get there. Confess your sins. Repent from those sins. Start reading God's word daily. Start worshiping God from your heart and praying to God from your heart. And commune with Jesus, with holy communion, and then fast, fast. Many of you guys have been fasting, and, and, and let me tell you what, you're getting your garments clean, and you're, you're earning good fruit into your account in heaven. There's so much we don't know. God has been showing so much to us and we're getting ready to get a spiritual download, an expanded version of everything we've ever known, expanded version of the Bible. So I want to ask you today, have you confessed your sins? Have you went to Jesus for healing? Have you been on your knees for forgiveness, pleading? What, one time someone said to me, yeah, like I'm going to beg God. Yes, beg God. There's nothing wrong with that. Beg God to come and cleanse you. Beg God to get those demons out of you. Come, beg God to get the oppression out of you. Do you understand? Some of you are possessed and you know it. The uptick has went up. It's, out, it's, out, it's, it's off the roof. It's off the charts. You, you know the pain that you're feeling. You need help. Your mind, your, your mind, God has given, God has allowed Satan to sift your mind. That's what you're experiencing, some of you are, because you've had double-mindedness. Are you hearing me? Double-mindedness. That is what's caused that. You, you loved God. You loved Jesus. But you started to go over here or over there. And you say, well, I don't know about the Bible. I don't know if it's exactly what, what I think it is. Listen, guys. Find an altar. Find an altar. Father God, the master, the master of the plan of sending his son to die on the cross so that we could escape, so that we could escape the sinful world. Jesus is your open door to, to eternity. He's your open door to salvation. It's, it's real. It's real. To have salvation, you need it. Jesus is the open door. How do you do that? You go to Jesus and you confess your sins. Go find a quiet place, a closet, a room on your knees, on your face. We are just, we are nobody without God. We are nobody without Jesus. Your, the air that's in your lungs is the breath of God. It's the breath of God. I never, I, I kind of knew that maybe, but I never really understood that until God told me. He says, my son, the air that's in your lungs is my breath. That means the air on the earth is God's breath. Confess your sins to Jesus. He's waiting on you. And if you've ever confessed your sins earlier in life, when you were a teenager, when you were 20s and 30s, whatever, even lately, but then you went back to sin. You, brothers and sisters, I hate to tell you this, but it's the truth. You have to go buy back your salvation. And how do you do that? You buy back your salvation through sacrifice, through sacrifice. I would have never known that, but the Lord gave that to me. And many of you that do not believe me about this, you're getting ready to have shame. You're getting ready to have shame. You're going to come to me where I'm going to be pastor and you're going to say, help me to buy back my salvation. That's what you're going to be saying. 
mockers, grumblers, and complainers. You have no place in God's kingdom. You've got to stop. You have no place in God's kingdom. Go to my playlist, um, training tab, look for Buy Back Your Salvation. And I've got a nice PowerPoint video there that shows how to do it. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you have to buy back your salvation. If you feel like, well, I'm, I, you know, I've confessed my sins. I went to, I went to the Lord and I asked for help and I, I've prayed. I don't think He hears me. God hears everyone. God hears everyone, but He only answers those that are intimate with Him. This is why Jesus said, "I never knew you." This is why He said this to the five virgins that never had oil in their lamp. They never had the Holy Spirit in their lamp. They never had the new wine in their wineskins. See. He said, he said, I never knew you. He's going to say that to you, brothers and sisters. He's going to say, where's your wedding garment? He's going to say to the ministry of, help me, Lord. He's going to say to the ministry of, He's going to say to the ministry of the punishers of evildoers, come and get this man. I don't know where he, where his garments are. He doesn't have any clean garments and he needs to go to hell. That's, that's God's word, guys. That's God's word. Do you want to go to the kingdom and live there for eternity? Jesus is waiting for you. Oh my goodness. Jesus is waiting for you. All you have to do is confess your sins. Come on. I shouldn't have to lead you through confession. You understand that, right? Confession. Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for the things I've done. You need to speak those out, the things you've done. Renounce them. Renounce them. Renounce them. If you've been into gambling, renounce gambling. If you've been to pornography, renounce pornography. If you've been into adultery, renounce adultery. Whatever it is. Renounce it and turn away from it, brothers and sisters. But but if you don't if you don't speak it out, the sin it's called hiding sin, and that's a thing. Hiding sin, you're hiding sin because you're not confessing it. I want to ask you, when's the last time? When's the last time, brothers and sisters, that you've read God's word? When's the last time that you? Pray to Father God from your heart. When's the last time that you worshiped Father God from your heart? And when's the last time you communed with Jesus through Holy Communion? And when's the last time you fasted? Love you very much, guys. I love you very much. I want to see you at Spiritual Ascension, at the Rapture. I want to see you soon. I love you. God bless you. And this is Julian. I'm out. Open the eyes of my heart. Holy, 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 you are holy.